Some ideas for new food products come from inside of a company, dreamed up by a marketing team or developed in a test kitchen. Others come from the outside, brought to the company by inventors or even ordinary customers. And sometimes a new product emerges from a combination of both. The idea for Kid Cuisine started with two friends eating at an Italian restaurant in Kansas City. The friends were Daryl Bailey and Tony Hoffman. Bailey worked at ConAgra Frozen Foods, whose products included such major brands as Banquet, Morton, and Armor. Hoffman was the owner of a local business called TNT Marketing, which specialized in designing products for children. As the two friends talked business over dinner, Hoffman recalled, a light bulb went up. Hoffman told Joseph Rebello of the Kansas City Star newspaper, We looked at each other and said, Why hasn't someone else thought about a frozen food meal designed specifically for kids? Now, it's worth pausing here to note that someone had already thought about a frozen food meal for kids. Quite a few someones, in fact. Fridge Dinner, one of the first mass producers of frozen meals, introduced Fridge Dinner for children in 1954. Libby's had made Libby Land meals beginning in 1970. But neither of these products outlived the decade they were introduced in, leaving a void for a new frozen kids meal in the 1980s and the 1990s. Tony Hoffman and his colleagues at TNT Marketing tested the concept for two years. The result was Kid Cuisine, a complete frozen meal with comic books, games, and two cartoon characters, BJ the Penguin and Chef, a polar bear with a French accent. If pairing toys with dinner seems familiar to you, it may be because TNT Marketing was directly inspired by another popular kids' food product, the McDonald's Happy Meal. As Tony Hoffman told the Kansas City Star, Kids Cuisine takes the Happy Meal concept to the frozen food section of the supermarket. TNT sold Tony Hoffman and Daryl Bailey's idea to ConAgra, who introduced Kid Cuisine to stores nationally in March 1990. Now at the time, products aimed at kids was big business. As Herbert Baum, president of Campbell's USA, told Fortune magazine, there hasn't been enough done in the kids' market. Now it's a niche that everyone is attacking. Microwavable foods was considered a key category for growth, with industry analysts predicting kids' microwavable meals could become a $500 million market. But ConAgra's motivations for wanting to invest in kid cuisine went beyond trying to capture a slice of the growing kids' consumer market. They wanted consumers to be acquainted with their brands from an early age to build long-term loyalty. The appeal isn't simply satisfying kids' needs now, but also developing them as users of our products so that they'll buy them as adults. The hope was that kids who ate kid cuisine would grow up to eat ConAgra's banquet or healthy choice frozen dinners as adults. Now, despite its hope for building a future frozen food consumer base, ConAgra's expectations for kid cuisine seem to have been low. So when one out of every two parents with children aged 3 to 12 tried kid cuisine in the product's first four months, company was surprised. It was even more surprised when two out of every three parents who had purchased kid cuisine came back for more. Clark Miller, the product manager for kid cuisine, told the Kansas City Star newspaper, we're not declaring this a tremendous success because Kid Cuisine has only been on the market four months, but it's outperformed our projections. It's moved off the shelves a lot faster than we thought it would. By the end of fiscal 1991, Kid Cuisine had earned $75 million in sales, but it had also earned a new competitor. About the same time as Conagra was introducing Kid Cuisine, another Frozen Kids meal was making its debut. Tyson's Looney Tunes Meals. Now at first glance, both frozen products were very similar. Both were marketed directly toward children with cartoon characters on the packaging. Both included some kind of activity with every meal, meant to keep kids entertained while waiting for their food to heat in the microwave. And both were cheaper than eating out, even if you got dinner from a fast food restaurant. But a few notable differences gave Kid Cuisine an edge over Looney Tunes Meals. For starters, there was the meal itself. Looney Tunes meal had a three compartment tray while Kids Cuisine had four. This meant, as Diane Stoneback and Irene Kraft of the Morning Call newspaper put it, Kid Cuisine, quote, always has room for dessert. Looney Tunes meals did not always have a dessert, or sometimes it had applesauce or cherry cobbler, which was meant to serve as both fruit and dessert. Another major difference had to do with pricing. Looney Tunes meals were $2.49. 
Kid Cuisine was priced at $1.89, 60 cents cheaper. Lastly, Tyson poured its money into advertising Looney Tunes meals. Its marketing budget was reportedly triple ConAgra's budget for Kid Cuisine. ConAgra instead relied on in-store tastings and coupons. These coupons reduced the cost of Kid Cuisine even further, deepening the price divide between Looney Tunes Meal and Kid Cuisine. By September 1991, it seemed that ConAgra had won the fight against Tyson, with Kid Cuisine outselling Looney Tunes Meal 3 to 1. And Looney Tune Meals were discontinued just two years later. When Kid Cuisine hit test markets, it originally came in nine varieties. Chicken nuggets, fried chicken, cheese pizza, cheese beef patty sandwich, mini cheese ravioli, macaroni and cheese with mini franks, spaghetti with meat sauce, fish nuggets, and chunky chicken supreme. It may not surprise you to learn that chunky chicken supreme was phased out as Kid Cuisine went national. The options were selected based on the kinds of foods that kids like to eat, but also included some fruits and vegetables like green beans. A kid who might normally refuse to eat their vegetables might reconsider if green beans were paired with something fun like Kid Cuisine's pizza and games. Based on the success of its original meals, ConAgra added four more regular varieties, a mega meal version with 30% more food, and a breakfast line in 1991. But early on, Kid Cuisine was met with criticism from nutritionist and consumer watchdog groups. Kid Cuisine was marketed to parents as, quote, balanced meals that are fun for your kids and good for them too, with no artificial colors or flavors. But in fact, Kid Cuisines were high in both fat and sodium and not a significant source of vitamins, minerals, iron, calcium, or fiber. To combat this negative perception, ConAgra gave Kid Cuisine an extensive makeover in the mid-1990s, first attempting to improve Kid Cuisine's nutrition and then reframing them as a, quote, well-balanced alternative to fast food that parents could feel good about giving to their kids. The revamp also gave Kid Cuisine larger sized portions for the main entree and a new chocolate peanut butter brownie dessert. But it also lost something in the process. Its original spokes characters. When Kid Cuisine was first introduced, it was accompanied by two cartoon characters. BJ, a bumbling penguin with a big beak, who was always getting himself into trouble, and the chef, a polar bear who was a gourmet French cook. BJ the penguin and chef were an important element of Kid Cuisine. As Tony Hoffman noted, cartoon characters have more of an instant identification for kids. Kids know this is something for kids. BJ and Chef went on adventures together, from the prehistoric era of dinosaurs to a spooky haunted house. These adventures were recounted in Kid Cuisine activity booklets and games. TNT Marketing and ConAgra were reportedly eager to make the characters popular children, even offering plush versions of the mascots. But when ConAgra revamped Kid Cuisine in 1995, BJ and Chef were replaced with Super Fun KC, a new Penguin cartoon character. Every Kid Cuisine meal gave KC a new role to play. For High Flying Chicken, KC was a daredevil pilot. For Cosmic Chicken Nuggets, he was an astronaut. Kid Cuisine would take the kids on a, quote, eating adventure, accompanied by KC as a kind of cartoon hero. Conagra would later partner with Disney, Nickelodeon, DreamWorks, and Hasbro to use their characters on packages of Kid Cuisine, linking the frozen kids' meal to beloved characters and toys like The Jungle Book, Peter Pan, Shrek, SpongeBob SquarePants, and Furby. Kid Cuisine is still available today, but it's not as popular or readily available as it once was. In 2020, only about 4 million Americans surveyed purchased at least one Kid Cuisine meal in the past year. As someone who ate Kid Cuisine at least once a week as a child, it's a little sad to see the decline. Although I'll admit I'm not especially eager to buy or eat Kid Cuisine now as an adult. I remember loving the brownies and the chocolate pudding with sprinkles, and I don't really want to alter that perception. I'd rather just continue to appreciate Kid Cuisine for the childhood memories. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this look back at the origins of Kid Cuisine. If you like this video and you would like to hear me talk about the history of ordinary things, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.